Hey everyone, Jim Hudson for River Rock Inn and Bait Shop and Hudson's On The Spot Guide Service bringing you your February Bait Shop video series report. You know, we're here in mid-February right now. It's the 17th and uh, we're out perch fishing today. Um, something that a lot of people are doing this year because trout fishing is non-existent for lake trout. So we got a lot of people asking about um, perch fishing, a lot of people out perch fishing. And, and actually it's been uh, a pretty... Uh, good year for perch. Um, you know, right now it's a little bit slow, but you know we're in the midwinter period and we can expect that. But what we want to do for this month is kind of get you geared up because March is coming and late ice will be here, and that's when these perch are really going to be snapping. You know, we we've been catching some really nice perch. You know, today you know catching some good jumbos. You know, ten and a half incher. You got you know a couple nines, some sevens, some eights, and you know. Uh, you know quite a few throwbacks so it's uh, been pretty good today here in this uh, snowy snowy day but uh, just want to give you some tips and tricks on how to catch these fish and first off is location where are we catching these fish well it's a pretty darn big area you know we're talking about the whole basically eastern side of the bay from second landing all the way out to the breakwater um, on the bay so you're covering depths of you know from you know, six foot of water all the way to 20 feet of water. And uh, these perch are all the way through all those different depths right now. And uh, the one thing about these perch are they're, they're nomadic. So they're covering a lot of ground, looking for a lot of uh, feed, be it minnow species or uh, invertebrates that are in the bottom. So to kind of help you key in on, on spots, out on these big flats like you, you see on a map, there's not much structure change out here. So what you are looking for is any type of structure change, any depression, any um, break line turn, anything like that, that these fish will concentrate on. When you're looking for a spot to go, that's what you're gonna look at. And it may take a lot of drilling to find those spots, but that's what it takes to be successful out here catching these perch day in and day out, because they do move a lot and you have to stay on them but you have to have that starting point first. So you look for those depressions, you look for those, those, uh, those differences in the bottom contours and start from there and start drilling from there. It's always good to have two or three people with you, you know, so you can leapfrog. One guy's drilling, the other guy's looking, the other guy's fishing, so on and so on. And uh, so when you're looking at your map, you can kind of see some spots out there off of first landing. You can kind of see a big flat and all of a sudden here's a big hole and uh, kind of looks like a bone shape and drops into 13, 14 foot of water. Well, that's a good spot to start. If you look out in the middle of the bay, you might see a big depression out there that drops into 20 feet of water. That, that could be a good spot to start. If you look out you know, near the breakwater, you can see all these these uh, contour changes and humps and stuff like that, those are good spots to check. So, um, you know, gear up your GPS, look at them spots, look at inside turns, them depressions, and start from there. And then just make sure you got a lot of gas in your auger and uh, start uh, drilling for these nomadic perch. You know, one thing's for sure is once you do find them, you know, then you can fine tune from there presentation wise and everything from there to catch these fish. I will tell you, there is a lot of small fish in the system right now, a lot of like, you know, four to seven inch fish. And, uh, but the big ones are in there with them as well. And as March comes along and as March progresses, you'll see a lot more of these big fish show up and group up tighter as they get ready to spawn. So, um, that's basically what you're looking for for perch out here and uh, what what the size size structure is for those perch and all that kind of good stuff. And you know now we just want to talk and give a little bit of tips and techniques on how to catch them. Um, what we do out here might be a little bit different than uh, what people are accustomed to on other bodies of water when they're fishing perch, but we use kind of a two prong technique. Like you can see I'm jigging right here, trying to call some fish into the spot that we're fishing. The fish had just left, so try to get them turned around and, uh, and get them back. So we're using a lot of spoons, a lot of jigs, and uh, a lot of droppers to fish these, uh, fish these perch out here when we're jigging. But with that, we're also using set line techniques, automatic fishermen and beaver dam tip-ups. Um, you know, it by far, day in and day out, catching these bigger, bigger fish like this, we are catching them, a lot of them, on uh, those set lines. Um, sure, we're catching them jigging, and as March progresses, we'll catch more of them jigging, but uh, um, for, a lot of, for a lot of it, you know, you want to, uh, 
you want to have these these uh, dead sticks sticked out there as well to help you catch more of these bigger fish. And we're using big shiners on those on those dead stick techniques. And I'll show you here in a little bit how we're how we're using it. But jigging wise, basically, I'm carrying two rods. I'm carrying a, a perch rod, which is a medium light action, you know, 24 to 26 inch rod using four pound test mono because I'm fishing a lot outside, moving a lot. And uh, this is what I'm using. You know, for my spoons, um, you know, a really good, good lure out here is these Haley jigs with the chain droppers that I can put wax worms or maggots or something like that on, or even a live minnow when they're really keying in on minnows. Um, you know, small, small Swedish pimples, and uh, one of my favorites, a small buckshot too. And uh, you can see from the photo here of some of my favorite lures that that I like to use out here but you know basically something that drops fast something that fishes fast but is small it's got heavy weight we can get down to the bottom and uh, you know then kind of rip it up call these fish in from wherever they're at and uh, and then see if they're gonna bite nothing in you know five minutes go to the next hole see if you're you're finding them there a lot of times you can see I fish right off my snowmobile so I can move a lot faster the second rod that I do carry is a panfish rod. Um, it's Jason Mitchell 24 inch panfish rod. I use a lot because sometimes we're downsizing to regular just panfish jigs. Like on here, um, the Northland new tungsten jigs, hard rock tungsten jigs work really great. And uh, put a wax worm on there, put a, put a um, maggot on there, or even a small little crappie minnow or shiner. Two pound test, um, great reel on it, but uh, so then we can downsize when those fish get finicky like we are right now, um, kind of moving into midday. So two rods that I'm always carrying, that perch rod, 26 inch, uh, Jason Mitchell rod or equivalent, it's a medium light action, and then you got your light action panfish rod um, for when you have to downsize from there. So those are the types of lures. Those are the types of rods that we're using out here. We're using our electronics, Vexlar um, is what I use all the time. And I'm carrying both minnows and waxworms or maggots with me each time I'm out here. So let's go check out how we uh, set up these dead stick rods and uh, show how they catch a little bit more fish for us too. So let's go check that out. Like I said, the second approach that we use to catch these perch out here is actually using set lines. And one of my favorite ways to uh, use a set line for perch is actually using an automatic fisherman like this. You kind of see it set up here. Basically you got a rod and a base and it allows allows you to have a have a rod that is is uh, ready to uh, set the hook for you as it's, it's almost like a downrigger. You can see you got a bobber here and when the fish hits, it pulls that bobber up until it gets tight. And then when it gets tight, it'll automatically set the hook for you. So it's a pretty cool deal. Um, you know, you, you set them out, you watch your rod tip flare up, and then the fish is able to, to stay on here because of the drag. And uh, you're able to come over, take the rod out, and uh, fight the fish with a, a rod and a reel. So, Pretty easy to do. You can set these up over, you know, quite a ways, you know, as as far as you can see them. And you know, for the most part, that when you get a fish, it's going to stay on there because, uh, you know, because of the rod setting the hook for you and the drag of the reel, you can get over and uh, fight the fish from there. So, other than that, beaver dam tip ups work just as great. And like I said, a lot of bigger fish do come on this technique. And basically, we're using four pound test line a small number 10 treble hook, and a split shot. Taking a, about a medium sized um, lake shiner. Get one here. It's like that. Just hooking them right in the back. Right in front of the dorsal fin. And with this, all you do is you just use the, just use the weight of that split shot and you let it go to the bottom 
and uh, when that split shot hits the bottom, you know you're on the bottom and you can adjust from there. You know, sometimes I have it four feet off the bottom, sometimes I have it, you know, right close to the bottom. That's what's great about using multiple lines here in Wisconsin is you can, you know, stagger your depths to see how far the fish want to come up and go from there. So there I'm on bottom like that. So I just put the rod in the rod holder, lift it over, set it in the pin, and then again I use that bobber to adjust and I like to give them a lot of lines so I almost bring that bobber right down to the, the base of that. So pretty easy, same thing, set up with tip ups. Actually one just hit it right here. We got the fish on. How cool is that? Got the fish coming up. You kind of see how that works. There's a there's a nice perch right there. So cool. As you can see, uh, these uh, dead sticks do work really well and uh, use them to your advantage. Like I said, tip ups or these automatic fishermen are going to catch a lot of fish for you. So you know, check out our website. Check out our Facebook page. We're always updating new things, new deals that are coming into the shop, all that kind of stuff, and our fishing report as well. So until March, I'm Jim Hudson for River Rock Inn and Bait Shop and Hudson's On The Spot Guide Service. I'll see you on the ice.